Hi everyone, this is Google Docs. This, that's in how to's. My name is Melinda Holt and I'm going to be showing you all about the Google. All right, the Google Docs anyway. Google has a lot of cool tools and I have a lot of favorites, which maybe I'll show you later, maybe not. Um, but right now we are here to do docs. You're all being given a copy of this deck in preview mode. So you can progress through the slides as we go. Um, you already know about a topic, that's great. Then you go right to the next topic that you don't know about. There's a, te um, there's a tech, there's a table of contents within this slide stack that will take you to specific sections. Here's what is usually the agenda for a workshop. We have introductions. We've already what, done that for the past 15 <laughs> minutes. Um, there's a brief overview discussion of docs and uses, participants will watch or follow along, and we got questions and evaluation. So that's how an agenda is supposed to work in a live workshop. Hopefully we will follow that agenda. My goals for you, whether we follow the agenda or not, are that all of you have at the end of this, a basic grasp of the function settings and features of docs, or you're able to find them, or you're able to figure it out and maybe even figure out who to ask for help, okay? I also would like for you at the very end to be comfortable enough to use and show docs to your students. Wouldn't that be great that you could actually use or that they could use this application for projects and assignments? So that is my ultimate goal, that you're able to use it with your students in a variety of ways. All right, so here's the table of contents. Each one of these blue pieces of text are links that will take you to those specific pages. So as I'm rambling along here, if you decide that, you know, I've already heard this spiel about general info and everything, I just wanna go to the page setup, then by all means, go there, okay? But keep listening because you might hear something that you haven't learned before, haven't thought of before, haven't seen before, even in these first couple of basic sections, I promise you, you're gonna learn something new today. At least, I'm gonna say three things. I'm gonna go out on a limb here. So this is the table of contents. Um, it's actually two pages, and this is in to be continued mode. I will be adding to this. I didn't cover everything in docs. There's just, there just wasn't enough time. So I'll be adding to this. And as I do that, there will be PDF versions available those PDF versions will be stuck in time, okay? But I'll keep, keep making new ones as I make, uh, make adjustments to the handout. So I'm on slide eight. We've got, <clears throat> we're on the, the section of Google Docs general info. Um, there's a section in here because I was taught by a very wise teacher once that sometimes I think you all should know what words mean and you don't. So all of you can thank Alisa Takeuchi for this dictionary of sorts. All of these terms and things are for docs, okay? I, everything is related to a doc. So this word insert right here is for, it, it's related to docs, nothing else, okay? So we've got app and application. So when I refer to the docs app, it's just a short word for application. <laughs> app is an application online, okay? So if you're not quite sure, oh, what is she talking about an app? Come back to terms here. Um, format, I'm, gonna, I'm jumping around a lot here. So format, settings related to text and images, including size, rotation, and type. So when I tell you we're going to format an image, this is what I'm talking about. We're gonna be doing something to the size or the rotation, the typeface, the font, whatever. We're gonna be doing something to it, okay? So all of these terms are here for you. I'm gonna be using them. So if, if at any time I use a word that, what the heck is she talking about, omnibar? Well, come back here and it's, the, the, um, the word's probably gonna be here, okay? I'm also gonna, <laughs> I also went ahead and put in some Google terms in here for you. So. Google Apps is defined by the waffle or the checkerboard. So sometimes you can access a Google Doc by going to the waffle. You'll, you'll hear that a lot. And I've also heard the, uh, the term checkerboard. Um, the, a menu, 
on Google. I don't know why it, it's all kind of food related here, but you can, um, you can use the word pancakes and most people will understand what you're talking about. Go to the pancakes and that's the menu or go to the hamburger or go to the hot dog. Okay. They all look the same. It's just three things, um, three lines in a, uh, a vertical format there. Okay. Options. You're going to find options within the skinny snowman. Now this looks kind of a skinny, well, he doesn't look too skinny here, but the three dots, they call that the skinny snowman. So that's where you're going to get options. And then the melted snowman, <laughs> the three dots are in a horizontal position instead of a vertical position. So these are vertical ellipses. These are horizontal ellipses. We call them skinny snowman and melted snowman. All right, so those are terms. Now, when you're in docs or sheets or slide, anything Google, if you want to share it with your students, you might need to know whether or not you're on the club or the pub. When you're in a club, you're quite proper and you have to hold your pinky a certain way when you're holding your cup. Because if you don't hold your pinky the certain way, then people know that you're not part of the club, right? So you have to hold your cup that way. And because you have a cup and the folks outside don't have one, you might not be able to share what's in your cup, right? So you can't pour a little bit of your Kickapoo Joy Juice into their cup because they don't have the same cup. Does that make sense? You have to have the same cup. So if you have a cup and your students have a cup, then you can pour your Kickapoo Joy Juice or your docs or your slides or your sheets back and forth into each other's cups. Okay? When you're on the pub, you got a tankard and you can do anything you want with it. And you can, you can share with people too, and you can pour a little bit of your stuff in there to, for the other person, and they can pour some of their stuff in yours. And you can clink your glasses together. You can do anything you want with the damn thing, right? So when you're in the pub, you can share with anybody you want, except you might not be able to share with the club. So if your teacher is in the club, and you'd like to share a little bit of your doc with her, or with him, you might not be able to because she's got a cup. Now, if she's got an extra cup, whoo -hoo, there you are. There's, there is the, the, uh, the, the solve of the problem. So as teachers, hello teachers, if you have two cups, if you have a cup that is dedicated to people in the club, you might have another cup that where you're able to um, you're able to take on, you're able to allow, you're able to get or be shared with the pub. All right. Usually here are the, here's, here's what's allowed all the time. So shares between pub and pub are always allowed. Shares between club and club, the same club, they have to be the same club. They are allowed. So if you got, you know, a blue cup and a blue cup or a red cup and a red cup, that's allowed. Okay. Shares between the pub and the club may be precluded and that's not Google's fault. That is your network. Your network can be changed by your network administrator. Okay. So your network administrator, if you need to share with your students, then I'm going to tell you right now, it can happen. It takes some work. So make them work, make them work because you need to share with your students unless you can share the pub with them. So if you have a public account and I have a public account as your student, then we can share. If you wanna use your club or you're told by your administrator, you have to use your club account, your G Suites account, anything that ends in at fill in the blank dot net dot org, that's a club. If your administrator says you have to use that, then you need to start pounding on your network administrator's door and say, look, I have to use my club. My students can only use the pub. You need to allow me to share. Keep being that squeaky wheel and it will happen. It happened in El Monte Rosemead. Um, Sarah Shapiro at the time was the vice principal. We talked, this was years ago. So if anybody here from uh, El Monte is here, 
uh, this happened years ago, but Sarah would not take no for an answer. And finally, they gave her some student accounts. They didn't open the pub. What they did was they gave their students some cups and she managed those cups. And eventually they were allowing their adult education um, population to be on the club with their teachers. Okay, so it can happen. I needed to tell you that, and I know it took a while, but you have to understand that unless you can share with your students, you can create documents, no problem, and you can print them out and you can send them afterwards to your students, but there's so much more functionality available in docs. You are not going to believe them when I show them to you. Um, you're going to want to share. Okay. All right, next slide. I'm on slide 12. Moving a little slow to start here, but we're going to get going here in a second. So this is explaining about Google Docs. Google Docs is a text editor. It's a, pro it's a productivity app in, uh, within G Suites, <clears throat> and it is available in other devices. So if you have an iPad, if you have a Chromebook, if you have an Android tablet, if you have an iPhone, if you have an Android phone, if you have a Windows phone, it doesn't matter. Google can Google Docs can be installed on that device. Okay, it's an app. We or I right now am using it on a browser on a computer. So it's an application that you can access online using a browser. It's also an application, aka app, that you can access on your phone or your tablet. All right. And you can share, you can collaborate in real time. If you're on this document, if you're previewing it right now, it's because I shared it with you. And if you can see in the top right-hand corner of my screen here, there's a share button. I click that and I made the link so that you could all see this handout. So sharing is a, is a powerful, powerful tool. Uh, if I have a public account and want to copy the files to my club account, is that possible? Yes. Uh, am I, there's, uh, there's the easy way and the short way, Curdy. Um, you can share it with yourself, okay? Then make a copy. Or if you're allowed to, and yeah, and you won't be, never mind. So uh, see if you can share it with yourself. That's my, that would be the first thing to do. Share it with yourself. So you are on the pub. Uh, or you're on the club rather, and you want to share it with your pub personnel persona, um, you would go to your teacher club account and you would share the documents or the files, whatever, with your pub account. When you open up your pub, you're going to go to share with me. You're going to find a, hey, the teacher Curdy has shared something with me. And then you can go and make a copy of it. That's the easiest way to do, to do that or vice versa. So you go to your pub account, you share it with your teacher account. As a teacher, you go to and you sign into your account, you open up the teacher um, account. I said that twice. Uh, <laughs> and then you go to shared with me in your teacher account. You'll see things there that are have been created with your pub account, right? And then boom, you make copies that way. Can you share with non-Google accounts? Uh, you can, it depends on the file type, Laura. So you can definitely share PDF files. You can definitely share in view only mode uh, or preview mode. Right now you're viewing this uh, handout on a browser and it should be opening up for you in preview mode. Um, it, it, you should, if you want your students to share with you, if, you're want, if you want your students to start using docs, have them create a Gmail, okay? Have them create a Gmail. When you go to the app site, okay, if you install the app on your phone or your tablet, you're going to see basically the same thing that I have showed here um, on the docs app site. When you're using a browser, when you're using a laptop, when you're using a Chromebook and you go to docs.google.com, you are going to the app. When you go to docs.google.com, you're going to the app, okay? Now, when I open up my phone to get to the app, I find the app icon, which is a little blue little looking guy right there, and I hit it and it opens up. 
to something like this, not quite like this, but something like this. Okay, so this is the app. When you go to docs.google.com, what it does is it takes you to ta -ta 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 -ta, all of your apps that you have created, or all of your apps. It takes you to all of your docs that you have created with your account. Do you see anything in here that looks like slides or sheets or PDFs? The answer is no. I'll answer for you. There isn't anything here except docs because I am at docs.google.com, right? And when I go to docs.google.com, that's all I will see. If I, if I made a mistake, if I don't want to be at docs, I could click on the, I'm going to use the word pancake. It's the main menu in the, the far left-hand corner. I click on that and I can go to sheets, slides, or forms. And I'll look at a page something similar to this and it will only list sheets or it will only list slides or it will only list my forms. You don't have to go to Drive to find your docs. You don't have to go to Drive to create a new doc. You go to Drive to organize your docs, to put them in folders and what have you, okay? So here on this screen, the big plus sign, I can create a blank document at any time, okay? So just really important to remember that this is the app site, okay? This is not Drive, but it is contained in Drive, all right? Here are the icons that you're gonna need to know. And oh my goodness, do they do so much, do all kinds of things with these tools. These are all of the tools that are in a dock right below the file menus, all right? So you don't have to memorize it, but I thought it'd be a good idea to have this here so you know what they all stand for. All right, next up, we're gonna create docs. Now I've already shown you one way, and that was from the app. So I kind of, I jumped around a little bit. But yes, you can create new from Drive. You should all know that. So what you do is you go to the waffle. Oh, wait, first you have to make sure you're signed in. If you're not signed in, you'll know because when you go to anything Google, you'll be asked to sign in. So I went to google.com, okay? And at the far right-hand corner, let's see if I can, here we go, yeah, look at that. The far right-hand corner, I can see my face. And I can also see that when I hover on my face that I know my email address, okay? So I know I'm signed in with my account. Um, if you're not too sure, if you've got, maybe you didn't uh, put your face up there, <laughs> maybe you didn't add your face to your account, you might have the letter, uh, the first letter of your name, okay? So you might see an A, B, C, D, whatever, okay? So that also could mean, could mean that you're signed in. What if you see a letter B or a letter A and your first name is Charles? That means that somebody else is signed in. Okay, so you need to actually hover over that letter and find out who you are signed in as, okay? Um, if it's not you, then click on that, scroll down and sign out, okay? Make sure you're signed in as you. Sign out if you're not and then sign in. By the way, before you sign out of an account, I just learned this yesterday with somebody that I was helping. She might be in the room, so I'm not gonna use her name. <laughs> please, please, please know what your password is before you sign out of all of your accounts. Know what your password is, okay? Then sign out and then sign back in so that you see your letter up here. Um, once you're sure you're signed in, you can open up Drive a variety of ways. You can go to the waffle, and you can select Drive, or you can go to the Omni bar, which is the address bar way up at the top of your screen, and you can type drive.google.com. Doesn't matter how you get there, just get there. All right, so we're at drive.google.com. How do you create a new doc? Everyone should know this. Uh, there's a big uh, new button in the far left-hand side. You're gonna click on that, and then you will see Google Docs. Now, all right, so when you click on that new button, you've got a lot of options here. And then within Google Docs, you also have options. The Google Docs has a little arrow next to it. I don't know if you've seen that before. Most times people go to the new button, they click on Docs, it'll open up a new doc. 
But did you know that you can also go from template right here? So from Google Drive, you can get to the templates that are also at the app site that I've already shown you, docs.google.com. So there are templates available within Google Docs, okay? Let's go ahead and just open up a blank document. So go to the new button, hit Google Docs, boom, a new document will open. We're gonna name our document. Here's the thing, and I don't know if you realize this or not, but if you look up at the Omni bar, way up at the top, I'm gonna to select it, and I'm even gonna try and zoom in a little bit. Yeah, it's not gonna let me. All right, so way up at the top where it says docs.google.com slash document slash D slash edit, that is actually the title of your document, okay? Google names it as soon as it creates it. Google has already titled your document. This is actually the title of your document. It's a link. It's a link, okay? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna name the link. We're gonna name the link. So everyone name your link. Uh, the next line, let's just, uh, favorite vacation spot. Anywhere but here. <laughs> okay, third line, your favorite color. Uh, but yeah, okay. Now, I know that's really faint for some of you, right? It's really faint. I just wanted to show you some, some things that you can do in a document. Anything that you can do in a Word document, you can do in Google Docs. Yes, you can. Don't tell me you can't. You can't anyway, because you're not on mic. Ha ha ha. So anything that you can do in Microsoft Office, you can do in the Google G Suites. Yes, anything. You just have to know how to do it. All right. So I've selected all of this text, right? Um, I'm going to make it bold. I'm going to make it bulleted. So there's a bulleted list right here. I don't like that bullet. There's a little arrow next to a bulleted list, and I can choose a different bullet. You can also make up your own. I can make the font size much bigger. There we go. Okay. You, you've got all kinds of options. All of these tools up here above your document will give you functionality, will give you formatting capability over your doc. There's a lot of functions there just above your document. There are even more within each of these menus up at the top of the screen, okay? And that is what the handout is based on. So I actually went through and I, um, for most of the menus, I created step-by-steps on what they do, okay? Um, everyone hit the, now I'm going to show you this once because once I do it, it's gone. All right. I have a tab or the document is open in a tab and there's a little X. You see that? So I'm looking at the tab with my last name, hyphen, delete, hyphen, Google Docs. The tab is telling me what it, what is open and I'm going to hit the X next to it. So I'm closing this document. See, there it went. Where is it? It's in my drive, okay? And the next way to create a new doc that's listed in the handout is to actually go to the app site, which we've already done, but I want everyone to do this now. You can use the waffle. You'll see it at the far right-hand side of your Google Drive, or you can type docs.google.com. All right, so here we go. We're back to the docs site. Okay, um, and you can organize the Docs app in a lot of ways. Right now, I'm looking at not owned by me. So I'm going to look at owned by me. So underneath all of the templates that are available up at the top, I'm given an option. Yours might say owned by me. Okay, so this is a way to organize just the Docs app. I've got owned by me, I've got owned by anyone, which means me or anybody else, right? And when I have that option open or selected, I see everything that's in my Google Drive that is a Google Doc. And the first thing that you should see right now is that document that we just created, right? Your last name hyphen delete, okay? 
You also have some other options right now owned by anyone um, is being sorted by last opened by me. How do I change this? There's a little AZ button off to the side, sort options. And that's where I can go by title instead or last modified, modified by me or last opened by me. Okay. I can also figure out in line with the title of your document on Google, on the docs app, you're going to have the skinny snowman, right? And when you click on it, you're given more options. Now, some of you have, are clicking that for the first time and you're going, oh, I didn't know I could make this available offline. Don't do it. Number one, you're not offline. Number two, you don't think you're going to be offline anytime soon. So only use this option on the documents that you're going to be needing. Let's say you're going to go to Yosemite next year. Okay. Uh, you go to Yosemite and you know that the internet there is bad, but there's a document that you have to complete or that you have to work on while you're on vac vacation in Yosemite. So you're going to make that document available offline while you're online on good, strong internet. Okay. Then you would do this. You would turn it on. Okay. And it looks like it hasn't done anything. But it, it, it will be available to you. Right now, what it's doing is it's downloading onto the device that I have. I'm going to let that sink in for a minute. When you make something available offline, it is actually downloading it onto the device, which, you know, it's not a big deal if you've got Google format going on. But if it's a really large document and you're on a phone, you might want to reconsider. Okay. So don't use this option unless you absolutely need it. That was the lesson learned today. All right. So you can make documents available offline. You can also um, figure out where a document's at by hitting the folder. There we go. Bink. By hitting the folder um, above, it says open file picker. Okay. So you can actually figure out where your documents are in Google Drive by doing that. Also on this Google Docs interface, some of you have probably already, <laughs> you're tired of me talking, so you already looked at it. Um, you can click on template gallery. And why reinvent the wheel if the wheel's already there for you? So as I scroll down, I see all kinds of different, um, different documents. Here's a training proposal by PandaDoc. <gasps> that means that um, somebody, a vendor has created a document and they're going to let you use it. And you're going to have to use it with their add-on. And there's going to come a point where they're going to ask for a subscription because you must like this type of document, right? So just be careful, all right? If you don't see the word add-on on a document, like up here, I see brochure. It's absolutely free. You're not going to be asked to... Uh, fork over any money or anything. If you see something that's listed that has the word add-on by the publisher, so here's one by Lucidchart. Um, it's got add-on with there, right there. So they will probably let me have this document, but there may come a point within even this document itself that they're going to ask me to pony up and um, pay for a subscription, at which point I copy all I select all the text and I paste it in a new document and then I delete that one. So <clears throat> I don't know if that's ethical or not, but um, at least I get the, the data. So, and now they usually tell you as well. I mean, they're not, they're not covert about it. They usually tell you that they're going to be asking you for money. So um, once I look at a template and I decide I want it, the minute you select a template, it's yours. It doesn't belong to Google anymore. It's yours. Okay. So, and you can name it anything you want. You can do anything to the text that you want. Does Docs have a merge mail feature? Yes, it does. It includes, um, it's with an add-on. And I'm hoping we get to that. Um, is the main benefit of Google Docs a collaborative aspect? I use Word because I'm used to it. Hey, if you use Word, you like it, you're used to it, you know where everything is, and by golly, use it. Okay. Google Docs. I like Google Docs because it's easier to me. Um, it's easier to teach. 
to me. Um, and I think people grasp once they once they grasp things, they they got it. I think it's just easier for students. Not only that, but Kathy, it's free. It's absolutely free. So uh, my students don't have to worry about paying for anything. They don't have to worry about subscriptions. They don't have to worry about running out of space generally. Um, is it compatible with Word? Absolutely. And how do I incorporate Google Docs into Canvas? And can you demonstrate how to upload a Google Doc into Canvas as an assignment submission? You would probably link it. I am not familiar with Canvas. I've, I've dabbled in it a little bit. We're having a Canvas workshop coming up. Uh, I can't think of when the date is. It's sometime later in this month. So if I don't get to it, my please come to can the Canvas workshop and it will be covered. I can almost assure you, okay? Um, but I'm pretty sure that you probably link it. Okay, I'm confused about the owned by anyone. Who is anyone? Ah, owned by anyone. Okay, so this means I'm going to go back to my screen. So if I go, if I click on owned by me, that means I own the document. I created it. I'm typing on it. It's mine. I might have shared it with somebody, but as I look down the list of owned by me, I see me, 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 um, and then I see Matt, and then I see Winging It Pro, and then I see Otan Techie, Jeremy, Laney. Owned by anyone means me and somebody else that has shared with me. Okay. All right. Now I'm going to go back to the handout to figure out where the heck am I? So we've created from Drive. We've actually gone to um, the Google app, right? And here's how to do it on a device. I'm not going to show this because I'm not using a device. So if you're on a tablet or a phone right now, Wow, you're brave um, if you're on a phone. <laughs> but here is how you would uh, open up a new document or open up one that you've already created. Okay, here, the steps are listed here for you. Okay, this is really cool. And someone told me that they, they found that this was the coolest thing they learned um, when they did a workshop at TDLS. Uh, dot new. So if you're, this only works if you, um, using Chrome, only if you're using Chrome. So it won't work on a phone unless you open up Chrome and it won't work on a tablet unless you open up Chrome. So, but, and on any other laptop or anything, you have to open up Chrome and then you type docs with an S dot new docs dot new. Boom. You have a new document ready to rock and roll. Let's say you're working on the web and you go, oh, that's a great idea. I want to do this, this, and this. So you go, boom, docs.new. And then you have the document because you're signed in, right? When you're using Google and you're signed into Chrome, um, you, can, you can get there. You can create a new document just by typing docs.new. So that's another way to create a new document from the template. I've alluded to this. We saw it when we went to the app. I'm not going to do this. Be my guest. Um, you can create, there are resumes there. There are letters there. All different kinds of templates that you might want your students to use. So that's another reason, maybe, to use Google Docs with your students other than that other product that you might be considering because there's a bunch of templates there. They're all ready to rock and roll. Um, they just need to be formatted. So you, you edit the text, you format it the way you want, or you just leave it formatted the way it is because it's so pretty. And you type in your information instead of the gibberish that's there on the template. And yes, the template is gibberish. It'll have, um, it might have a, a one, two, three, four, nowhere street. Right, so you need to change that if it's part of a, a business letter or the text might say lorem ipsum diddly squat right so you need to change that into hi my name is and i would like to apply for <laughs> okay so be aware of that all of the text needs to be changed or deleted you can delete it out of there you don't need to keep it but you do need to edit the document not just format. The format's pretty much there if you're doing a template, but the editing needs to be done for sure. Uploading. 
All right, so Dave, I think you asked a question about how to convert. Here we go. What you need to do, you, need, you actually need to do this in Drive. Okay, so conversion, um, converting Word to Doc or Word to Google format is done within Drive. So on your Drive, at the very top of your screen, towards the right, close to but not quite near the waffle, you will see something that looks like a gear. Okay, we're going to click that gear. It's the settings gear. And we're going to hit settings again. So it's the settings gear settings. Redundant, but it is what it is. All right, so we've selected the gear. And then we selected settings. Everybody with me so far? All right, now on this page, there are some areas that you can select. This is not the drive workshop, so I'm not gonna go over the areas. I just want to point out that we are on the general tab on the left-hand side, okay? We're not at manage apps, we're not at notifications, we're at general, so we're at the general tab. Then as you look down your list here, you should see convert uploads. This little checkbox, that's the magic. If it's not filled in with a check, do it now. Fill that in with a check. So right now, from this point forward, as soon as we hit the done button, everything that you upload into your Google Drive, if it is uh, available, if it is convertible, <laughs> if it's convertible, uh, you will be able to upload your Microsoft Word documents and they will become Google Docs like that. Just that easy. You don't have to do anything. Okay. If your Microsoft Word documents are already in Google Drive, they stay Microsoft Word documents. They're not going to change just because we did this. We're going to have to do something in order for that to happen if they're already there. But from this point forward, you're going to be able to, your, all of your files will convert. Now, why do you want to do this? Well, there's a really good reason, and it's space. Um, on pub accounts, you, 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 you folks out there, unless you're a Google trainer, you have 15 gigabytes of space on Google. As a Google trainer, I'm giving an, uh, some more. Um, become a Google trainer. <laughs> hey, you get 100 more gigs. And I actually got two more gigs because I did a survey for them a long time ago. So a long time ago, I had 17 where everybody had 15. Then I became a trainer. Now I have 117 gigs used. Now, it's telling me right here that I'm not even at a gig yet, folks. I am not even at a gig yet. And I've had a Google account since 2007. Oh, yeah. I'm an old one. Oldie but a goodie. All right. So I'm not even at a good gig yet. I have photos in here. Those don't convert. I have PDFs in my drive. Those don't convert. Everything else, all of my PowerPoints, all of my spreadsheets, all of my Word files, when I first started using Google, I converted it. And that means there's no space. All right, now I'm going to go ahead and hit done. And when you use no space, you got no worries because you're going to have plenty of space. Okay, so that is how you do the voodoo. So from here, if I want to upload my files, there's two ways of doing it, and they're both described in the handout. The first way is to go to the new button in Drive. You have to, by the way, you have to upload using Drive. You have to upload using Drive. How can you upload? You have to use Drive. <laughs> All right, said three different ways. You have to use Drive. So um, go to Drive if you're going to do this, and you can upload a file, right? You use the file upload from the new button, or you can upload an entire folder. So David, you asked a question about all these Microsoft Word files. If you have that folder on your desktop right now, you could click this button, folder upload. Let's just say I've got um, some tests here, and I'm going to upload them. Now, as soon as I hit the upload button, it will start to upload this entire folder. That might take some time, especially if you have a lot of files in the folder. Will everything um, upload? 
Yes, even if you have files in here that don't convert from Google Docs or from Google, <sighs> even if you don't have documents that will convert like Word to Google or PowerPoint to slides or what is it, um, Excel to Sheets, all right? If you have something in there that is a, uh, a movie, then yes, it will go, it will upload, it just won't convert, okay? All right, I'm gonna cancel this because I don't really wanna upload that, that doc or that file. Um, you upload a, a document, just one, the same way, you just go to File Upload and Choose, okay? I'm gonna go ahead and do that because I want you to see the process, but I, I want it to be quick, all right? So I'm just gonna upload something, here's a text document. Okay, I'm going to open that and then I get this message down at the bottom here and that took all of maybe what three seconds, which is good. By the way, because you're using Drive, you can use Safari, you can use Firefox, you can use Edge if you need to upload. Okay, so right here it's um, I've got show file location. It should have gone into my Drive. I already know where it is, but if I want to open it right at this point, there we go. And I actually don't know what this document is. So this is, oh, there we go. Look at that. It's a chat with a bunch of people's names in it. <clears throat> Wonder what that was for. Hint, hint. Type your name now if you haven't already. Okay. <laughs> so that's how we take attendance. So, um, so that's how you upload a file. Now, another way of doing this, I'm going to move my desktop over just, or my Chrome over just a little bit so you can see what I'm doing. Right here, I've got some files, right? There's just some screenshots and I want them in my drive. I want them to, to be here. So I'm going to open up um, a folder, okay? I've opened up a folder on my drive and I'm going to click, hold and drag this file. See me moving it? I'm moving this file around, you're gonna get dizzy. And I'm going to drag it onto my drive. Do you see how that's turning a, a different color and it says drop files to instantly upload them to this folder. And here we go. And you see a little crank. Bing, there you go. Now, what if I wanted to do two at the same time? Absolutely. Drag two. Go ahead. Okay. And it's telling me, hey, you've already got this version of the file. A new version has been attached to the original. Okay. So I don't, it doesn't even ask me if I want to replace it. It just does it for me. All right. So there are the files, both screenshots right? So these didn't convert to doc. These didn't convert to anything else, but I do have them. So you can upload anything you want into the drive. Is there a reason we might not want to convert things? Absolutely, Michael. Um, we might not want to convert it because our boss gives us a file that we want to work in docs because that's all we use. And um, maybe uh, they don't want it converted. Okay. The next question that usually comes is, well, if I convert it to Google, can I convert it back to Word? Yes, you can. And it's gotten really, really good. So the, um, the conversion from Google Doc back to Word is, is very close to what it should be, if not exactly what it should be. It's gotten much better than what it was, okay? So um, try it out. But you might not want to convert it because somebody in your office wants, they want to use Word. That's all they want to use. That's, that's their choice. Okay. Uh, uh, trainers who were just given a notice uh, that Google is creating in the process of creating all of its engineers are getting together because they've gotten so many requests. They're finally going to be able to create um, fillable PDFs or fillable docs that that translate to PDFs or something to that extent. So it's coming, okay? PDF to docs will remove images. Mm, not always, it depends, it depends, um, Wilder. So if we convert a file, there's no original copy left. Well, if you convert a file, the original is actually on your desktop, right? So keep that if you want it. Um, and yes, you can convert back. Anna Laura. So if you convert a file and it becomes a Google Doc and you type on it, 
And then let's say your boss decides, hey, I want that file back. And you go, okay. All you have to do is download it as a Word doc. And I, yes, I am going to be showing you how to do that. And by the way, folks, you don't have to use Chrome. You can use Safari. You can use Edge. You can use Firefox, whatever the browser is. The only thing I can think of that you won't be able to do that I've uh, shown you so far is use docs.new docs.new okay so previously uploaded so something's already been uploaded and you want to convert it um so there we go i have no idea what this is yeah edit in google docs there we go all righty so i have opened up a document that was uploaded as a word document and it's still a word document because it has the extension up at the top and it tells me microsoft word format i can do anything i want to this document okay i can type in it i can add stuff to it add stuff to it okay and i know this is really small so don't don't, don't yell at me please um so i've just added something here right now you want to be able to convert it, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the file menu. Okay, so I've opened up the Word file. I'm going to go to the file menu and save as Google Docs. What is that going to do? Well, what's it going to do? It's going to make a copy for me. And when the copy opens up, you can see now that there is no doc X and it doesn't say Microsoft file here. Oh, and look, it still has the text that I added to it. Now, how do I know it made a copy? Well, cause I'm a Google trainer and I'm supposed to know that stuff, but here's the real reason. <laughs> Not only is the tab open where it says, it doesn't say doc doc X anymore, but there's also the first tab that has the same name tells me that the Microsoft Word format is also still alive and well. So when I went to file, save as a Google Doc, it saved it as a Google Doc, so it made a copy of it, all right? So that's how you would do that, okay? Um, all right, now, downloading. If at any point, I want to download this file. You can also do the same thing with a folder. Okay, you would right click on the folder in your drive. But if you have a doc open, you can actually download it while it's open. So I'm going to click on the file menu again, because that's where you do this. And this is also in the handout, by the way. I go to the file menu, download, and I'm given all of these options, okay? And here's the first one is Microsoft Word because that's what usually what people want. I wait for the magic. It asks me where do I want to put it. I just tell them on my desktop and I hit the save button. And here it is on my desktop. And when I open it up, now here's the thing, folks. Microsoft and I kind of have a love-hate relationship. And here re recently it's been more on the hate side than the love side. So I know that when I double click this to open it, it's gonna take about four minutes. So I'm not gonna do that, <laughs> okay? Um, usually when I open up a Word doc on my, this computer, I will walk away and go get some coffee. So I can't do that, so I'm not gonna double click it. Just take my word for it. This is a Microsoft Word document. It has all the same everything in it that this document on my Google has, okay? And if I change this to be bold or red, or anything on the Google Doc, when I downloaded it, it would retain that on the, um, on the, uh, the Microsoft side. Downloading is in the, the handout. Okay, so we've got, we did the upload, we did the upload. Uh, we did the conversion, so that's in the handout, that's on 23. Uh, by the way, from this point forward, there were prompts up here to, in, in the pages previous to 24, there were prompts to sign into your drive and then open 
or sign into Google, then open Drive or open Docs or something, those references aren't made anymore past slide 24. So that's what that prompts to sign in means. They're no longer given once we hit slide 25. So we've already kind of gone over download, kind of. Um, I want to show you page setup. So, and I'll get back to download again. Everyone open a new document. And we're going to go to docs.new. Okay, a new document is going to open up. I'm going to title it. And Elisa, could you do me a favor and um, clear the Q&A of the questions that I've already answered? <laughs> Thank you. What's that? Could you clear the, uh, just an, um, hit answer sure. live and then done? All right, so I've, I've created a new document sure. and I'm going to type something. And then it dawns on me, oh, I want a new page layout or I, wanna, I want the background to be gray. So I'm going to select file. Okay, we select the file menu. I'm going to go all the way down to the bottom. It's right above print. There, it's called page setup. I'm going to select that. Okay, and here we go. Now, I have already set a default setting on this account where all of my margins are 0.5. Okay, if I wanted to add a page color to this document, I can do that by selecting any color I wish. Okay. When I say OK, the settings that I have changed on this page setup page will glue themselves to this document alone. OK, if I click set as default, then from this point forward, the documents that I create will have portrait, letter eight and a half by 11, or let's just change that. We'll make it, uh, no, we'll make it landscape. So we're making it landscape. Eight and a half by 11, a yellow color, 0.5 are all my default um, margins. And when I set that as default, every time I create a new document, they will have these settings. Okay, if I hit set as default, I'm not going to do that because I don't want this to be my default setting. All right, but I do want it for this document. So I'm going to hit OK after I make my settings changes. Boom. And there we have a yellow document with, um, with text. Why is that light underneath? All right, and it appears that the text, we're learning something new together. The text is still, let me zoom in here a little bit. Yeah, the background where the text is being written is white. Why is that? I don't know why. So we just learned something new together. That is odd. Ah. But to take care of it, what I did was I selected all of the text and I went to the highlight tool. The highlighter is right next to the text color. And I made it the same color. So now when I type, yeah. There we go. Huh. I don't know why that is. It didn't used to be that way. We learned something new together. Um, Elisa and I were talking about this earlier. This is the joy and pain of Google. Sometimes things are one way and you know that way and you live that way and you try to teach that way and then they change that way and your way <laughs> goes out the door and you have to learn a new way. <laughs> so that's just something to keep in mind. But that's how you use page layout. Something else in the file menu is the, um, again, the download. There are a lot of options on download and each one of these is described in the handout. Let me go back there real quick. Da -da 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 -da. Download as. So this is how you do it. I'm looking at the, uh, the slide deck here, okay? And on page 28, you'll see how they are defined. So here's Microsoft Word described, ODT is an open um, document format, uh, rich text, PDF. By the way, on rich text, yes, images will be excluded, 
okay? On PDF, if you download something as a PDF, the images might be skewed or they might move. It's called float. Um, so they might float a little bit, but they should not be removed. So someone had mentioned that in the Q&A. They shouldn't be removed unless you downloaded mistakenly as a rich text format. Then, yes, pictures get <laughs> axed out. Uh, I forgot to do it on this one too. There we go. Uh, and then we've got plain text web page and EPUB. A web page, don't download as a web page. Okay, um, it creates a zip file, which has all of your images in one folder and um, all of your, uh, your text uh, in another uh, file. And it, you just don't want it, okay? So everyone, oh, I can create a web page. No, you don't, <laughs> okay? What this is used for is to create something that um, is zipped and has all of the code in it if you are actually a web designer and you can upload HTML files into your, your, uh, your CSS. So, so don't do it, okay? It sounds really cool, but it's not something you should do. The EPUB, you might want to try that out if you're on a Mac or on a, using an iPad, because what it does is it creates a little book for you. And again, the images do float a little bit, so you have to be aware of that. Just resize it in your dock, okay? So you might have to download it one or two times to get those images exactly where you want them, but it does create a book. And again, if you're using an Apple device, um, it opens up in iBooks, and it's really kind of slick. So you've, your document becomes a book. And by the way, this one over here, the um, example G, it was not in uh, the landscape. It was in portrait layout when it was created. And the book, when it downloaded as a book, it made itself into a uh, portrait landscape and <laughs> um, portrait. So it was, uh, it was pretty cool. All right. Um, email is attachment. A lot of you probably don't know about this. You can actually send documents to people by using the file menu. I'm back on a document. I've gone to file and email is attachment. So what it's doing, it, it just, that quick second right there, as soon as I hit email is attachment, the, the wheels started grinding and it made a copy of it. Okay. Um, uh, as an attachment. So I send it to myself. I'm going to send this to Elisa. If I can spell her name right. There she is. Okay. Um, I could also, I, I can send this to anybody. Okay. Um, let's see. Emola. Here we go. Okay. And then I can add a little message. So you don't have to go to your email in order to attach in a document when you're using Google. You can do it right from the document itself. You could also um, make this a PDF, make it a Word file, make it an ODT, make it a, a don't make it, a, oh, be an HTML. Don't make it HTML, okay? So do PDF, do Word, do plain text that'll strip out all of the, uh, the images or RTF. Again, all of the images get stripped out. So this is generally what I do is a PDF because what that does is it compresses it and makes it smaller. Um, in, not smaller in size, it just takes out some of the code and makes it, trust me, it makes it smaller. Okay, I'm not gonna explain it. Um, then you type in a message. Here you go, just like an email message. Okay, and then they, when you hit send, it tells them in the email that M Holt or, or actually this account is scoeytech at gmail has shared a doc or not shared has sent you this document and they have an attachment they'll have a pdf so you can send directly to someone as in any format that you want if you choose a dark color can you type in light colors absolutely so i'm going to and i've done this before in workshops i'm in a document and ruth i'm answering your question right now so i have a light background can I type in light colors? Well, do I want to? Because if I type a light color, 
Can you see it? Oh, no, you can't. But that might be a good thing. Because now you're all here, you're waiting for the instructions, but you don't get them because I haven't given you them to you yet. So instead of having to find that document with the instructions on it, while I'm waiting for my entire class to get seated and ready and, and on the Zoom or whatever, I can at any point cop or select all of the text and then make it a dark color so that they can see it. Okay, and you gotta make sure you get all the text too. All right, so it depends on you. Um, a, a darker background with a, a bright white font is a bad thing. That will uh, be bad for people who have um, uh, visual issues, okay? Um, you, you're definitely gonna want to increase the size, okay? So you select the text, and you choose a different size, just like you can a word, okay? But be careful about that, that background color and being really close to the text color. Um, there are accessibility workshops that we've done that answer these questions a lot better than I am doing right now, okay? So, eh, you, uh, just, just be aware of it. Michael, I see your question about font size, and since I'm doing font right now, we're going to do that. All right, so I'm going to go back to a normal size. Now, your styles. Styles is covered. I'm jumping around a little bit now, but since the question came up, I'm going to, um, let's say I want this text right here. This is my normal text, right? It's Calibri 12. Uh, yours is probably Arial. And Arial 11 or 10, maybe. How did I get mine to be Calibri? Well, here's what I did. I selected the text. I went to my font face. And I chose the one that I wanted. And I'm going to select Verdana. Okay. And then with the text still selected, I am going to go to my styles. My styles right now say normal text. So as I'm looking at the top of my document, underneath, for me, underneath the word format, I see normal text, right? And there's an arrow next to it. So normal text, the arrow next to normal text. Here, is, all my styles, I've got title, subtitle, heading, heading, options, okay? Now I'm going to go up to normal text and I'm going to go to the arrow that has more options next to, her, next to normal text. And then I'm going to select update normal text to match. Remember, I selected the text, right? And then I went to normal. And then I went to this arrow. Now it's going to update normal text to match what I selected right here. And I don't know if you saw it or not, but right away, all everything that was normal is now the same as just that few lines of text that I changed. So that's how I changed default on this document. If I want to change the default on every um, document that I open, I will save my default styles. Okay, so I save as my default styles. And then the next document I open should be Verdana 12 from normal text. Or it could be Verdana 12. Um, I could make this text highlighted. If I wanted that for my normal style, oh my God, um, then I could, I could save that. All right, that was too bright for my eyes. Okay, we've done styles. I'm going to need to go back to the handout here. We've emailed as an attachment. Um, then we've got the details in the version history. I'm not going to show you this because we're running out of time. Um, but you just go over this. This tells you where, when the document was created. And version history, I am going to show you that because this will save you a lot of time. And I believe there's someone in the room that we discussed this. Uh, actually, I've discussed this with a couple of people. So I'm going to go to a document. Okay, by the way, I'm going to change this page setup because I don't want the gray anymore. Say okay. All right, so we're going to go to File. And we're going to go to Version History. 
go to your file menu, go to version history. You're not going to see a lot of different versions because, uh, if you're on a new document. So if you wanted to open up a document that's been in your drive for a while that you've worked on for a long time, by all means do that. And then go to file, version history. It opens up a, a, the document in a different format. Okay. Um, on the bottom right hand side of your document, way down at the bottom, there's a checkbox called show changes. Let me move this up. Here we go. Show changes. So I've got that checkbox selected. Now on this document, I'm the only one that's been working on it because it's my document and it's just, it's full of gibberish, but it's my document and I haven't shared it with anybody. If you shared your document with somebody, you're going to see different people's names on the far right hand side. And if you click on a version, come on, there we go, it takes a minute. You have to have patience. So you click on a version, um, you will see who has made changes and you can move to those changes. And as you do, you will see the changes made on the document <laughs> and who did them. So right here, this text was removed by yours truly. All right, and I know that because my name is here, but if I had shared this with Elisa and she was the one that deleted this text, her name would be here instead, okay? The skinny snowman in line with each version allows you to do different things. So you can name this version. Okay, so this could be um, post cell basic units or something. I don't know. It's, 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 make it something that you'll understand. But I can also, from that skinny snowman, make a copy of this version. So if there's been a lot of changes on a document and I want to go back to the beginning of time to where this was the document, I can make a copy of it right now. How cool is that? So you're going to open up a document. You're going to go to the file menu. You're going to select version history and then Click on the show changes checkbox down at the bottom right hand corner. Okay. And then just select one of the dated versions and those dated versions dated with time, you can actually change that to something that is more meaningful to you. Okay. All right. Now, if I want to restore the version that I have selected, see, I've, I've clicked June 6, 8.45 PM. That's, that's when I'm clicked on. This is the version that I have selected at this point. I could click this button right here, restore this version. But if I do, I lose everything that was done afterwards. So I'm going to be very careful by doing that if I ever do it. And I've never done that. Um, there have been times um, where I've made a copy of the latest greatest, then gone back in time to restore the original version because I've used a link that a lot of people are using and I want them all to get a fresh, or I want to use that link again. I mean, there's lots of reasons that you would do this. Um, you think of it, okay? You, you figure it out if it works for you. I don't use this as a rule. I will make a copy of the version that I want instead, but that's me, okay? If I don't want to do anything, I want to, I want to get out of here. I don't want to do anything. I will click the arrow next to, um, well, up at the top left-hand corner, okay? All right, um, so that's the version history. I did want you to, I wanted to see, I wanted you to see that. Um, there are also, there's this menu, I'm going to probably skip a little bit. I'm looking at it, yeah, most of it. Uh, the view menu, go there, it's really cool. There, oh, there is one thing I wanna show you, the document outline. View options, I'm gonna hit view, and then I'm going to show document outline, okay? So when you do that, show document outline, what happens is that if you have um, headers, like heading four um, or uh, anything that's not normal text, so title, subtitle, heading, heading one, two, three, four, I mean, even this little tiny guy, little heading six, 
okay? Any headings that are in your document, they become part of the document outline. So that when I open the document outline, here's the icon right here. First, I have to go to view, show document outline, okay? Then all of my headings appear. Ooh, isn't that cool? So now I know where my headings are, right? It gets better than that because now I can click on it and it goes right to this section, which is way down at the bottom. This is a really long document. I could be scrolling for days and days and days and days. There we go. I'm finally up at the top. Why do that when you can click the document outline? You're at the, the last heading. Okay, or I can click in the middle and it takes me right there. I can click anywhere in this document outline and it takes me there. How cool is that? So you have at your disposal, think of this as a table of contents, <gasps> right? And then your students, when you share this document with them and you tell them to go to Cajun Ipsum, aye, here we go changing small letters to caps or vice versa. Sure. So we're going to select some text. All right, we're going to go to format because we haven't hit that menu yet. There's a lot of different things that you can do in format. All right, so we're going to format. We're going to go to text. And within the text, you know, everyone's used to, okay, bold, italic, underline, strike through. Look down further, folks. Because here we have uppercase, title case, or all lowercase. So you can choose. Now remember, I selected some text. I went to the format menu. I selected text. I went down to the bottom where it said capitalization, and I'm going to hit uppercase. And now all of the words that I had selected are now uppercase. If I don't, if I, oh, I've, I messed up, there's a couple of things I can do. I can control Z and undo, or I can use the undo button which is prompting me to use control Z, or I can go back to, I have to select the text. I go to tools. I go to, um, whoops, format <laughs> rather. I go to format, I go to text, capitalization, and then title case, okay? Or lowercase or whatever the case may be, <laughs> right? All right, so that's how you do the text. So there's a lot of different things here in text. Um, you can, yes, you can add headers and footers. Yes, you can add page numbers. As you can see, this document has a page seven that was done with page numbers. I can um, increase or do indentation. There's a lot of more indent tools available here for you besides these two up in the toolbar, which is up um, on the uh, far right-hand side. Okay, is bolding text how doc identifies headings? Choice. So I'm going to select Cajun Ipsum, okay? Cajun Ipsum is heading two, right? I am going to keep this selected and I'm going to debold it. It's just been debolded, okay? Is it still in my outline? Yes, because it is still heading two. So you decide whether or not your headings are bold or not, okay? Now this one, I just did it manually. I took the bold away from it. If I wanted all of my heading twos to be just like that one, not bolded, I would update heading two to match. Okay. And then all of the other heading twos would be uh, debolded. That sounds weird, doesn't it? Debolded? I just debolded it. Um, so it, really cool. The headings, this document outline is really, really good, especially if you're sharing with students, especially if it's a long document. Um, this is this is kind of in, akin to a hyperdoc. Insert, there's something here that I'm almost positive you guys don't know that you can do. So I'm gonna go to a, a document. I'm going to insert my my key. I'm going to, well, I'm gonna hit enter, there we go. Um, and I'm gonna to go to the insert menu. I'm going to insert. Yes, you all know you can insert images. I know you all know that. Um, yes, you should, probably most of you know that you can search the web to find a document. Uh, and I'm going to do that. I'm going to puppy. Okay. 
So here we go. We select a puppy because we search for, oh, I like this one better. So there we go. We're going to insert. Now the puppy is going to come in and he's pretty big. That's a big puppy. So when you put an image in your uh, document, whether you upload it from your computer or search the, the web and do it, you can resize it. It will have handles. Yes, this is described in the handout. Boom. Where'd he go? There he is. Oh, I did two puppies. Why did I do that? All right. So there's the puppy. Okay. You can also wrap text. Okay. So you can move it around. Um, as you click on your image, you'll get some options as far as margins are concerned. You can change those. You can customize it. You can make this image move with the text or it's in a fixed position on the page. You don't want it to move even if the text does. Uh, lots of options there. Okay, and that's with the skinny snowman after you select the image. You also have, and this is what you don't know you can do, all image options. So in the skinny snowman, you select your image. On the uh, bottom right hand corner, you'll have image options. You select that, and then I'm going to select all image options. Lots of different things appear on the far right. It's very cool because now you have more control. You have, uh, you can wrap both sides or the left only or the right only. You can put adjustments on this, um, this image so we could make it more transparent or we could have it brighter or we could even, I know I'm going fast, but it's all described. We could recolor it. That's really ugly, but it's okay. If we decide we don't like that after we've done it, we can go to no recolor and it's back to its original format. Okay, so how did I get there? I'm gonna click on the, the, the puppy. I'm, I've got all these menu options, the skinny snowman, all image options. There's the magic right there. Bookmarks are really cool. Um, for those of you that are, um, that are creating sites or that want, folks to be able to go to um, a specific spot in a document from another site, okay? So let's say you want people, when they come to this document, you want it to go way in the middle or way down at the bottom, right? First thing you need to do is select the text, okay? And you're gonna go to, what are you gonna go to? Insert. You're going to go to insert, bookmark. Now this is already a bookmark, so it's grayed out, All right? So this is a bookmark right here. And I know it's a bookmark because it has a little bookmark icon next to it. So I've created bookmarks in this document, All right? And I'm going to scroll down. I am going to add a link as I did all of these, all of these links go to the bookmark. And you're a big deal. You just showed us that in the document outline because I can take this and I can put it in another document. And then I can um, direct people to exactly this point, this anchor in this document, right? Because right here, this is a little special little magic right here. Once I, let me show you the complete magic here. I'm going to insert another link. Okay, and it's giving me the option of putting in a link like www.otan.us or I can select a heading or I can select a bookmark. And the bookmark has a drop down next to it just as heading does. And I can go and I can select any one of these bookmarks. Now, I already have some of them selected. I'm going to select table of contents. So here we go. There's the table of contents. And notice this is out of order. So I can put the bookmarks list. I can put the bookmark list in any order I want. Then when I select this link and I copy it, okay, I've just copied it. I can put it in this document. Okay, and yes, I know that's a really long link. Why would you ever do that? I'm just showing you here. Here is the link. Okay, so I'm going to select this text. 
and then I'm going to paste the link to the bookmark so that when I open it, see what happened? When I open it, it's going to go to the table of contents, which is right up at the top. So that wasn't really awe inspiring, was it? Wow. I'm bombing. Okay, here we go. I'm going to select this one. <laughs> down towards yeah brief history there we go so i'm going to copy this one i'm going to go back to that other document i'm going to change this link so let's pretend i did this the first time okay paste and apply okay here's the link here's the right link i hope did i copy the first one oh my god i copied the table of contents oh we didn't yes i did gosh darn linda patience Ah, I know, we're running out of time. This will work. Melinda's just having a, there we go. Woohoo! Okay, I didn't do anything. I was waiting for the magic, <laughs> okay? So this link from this mm, document went to this spot on this page, which is really long. It went to an anchor point. Some of you are going to go, oh, that is really cool. And some of you are going to be like, I didn't want to know that. So I'm sorry. Um, the handout <laughs> has a lot of good information still in it. And I know there were some questions about add-ons. Uh, by the way, word count, oh, my God. It's a lifesaver when you're doing, um, when you're doing uh, proposals. Uh, footnotes, really cool to do with the Explore tool. Voice typing, I didn't cover that, and I wasn't planning on covering it here. I did cover it in the drive, uh, but I did include on this handout voice typing command. So there's a link there that opens up a document. I'm opening up for you now. So if you have the, uh, the handout, the bit.ly link that I gave you, that links to this, where you can actually look through the voice commands. And notice that the background is a light gray with a dark uh, writing. So there are other links within the handout. I'm going to give you that link here again in just a second. Um, Add-ons. We did not cover this. Add-ons add functionality to a Google Doc. That's all they do. So somebody asked about mail merge. Yes, there is a mail merge function in Google Docs as long as you have the add-on. So what you would do is go, use this handout if you wish. Um, go to the add-ons toolbar or menu, right? Click on get add-ons and then search for mail merge. And you're going to have a bunch come up. So look at, this is really important right here, read the descriptions and the reviews, okay? And then um, make sure that more than five people are using it because it might get a five-star rating, but if only five people are using it, mark, mark. Make sure, you know, set your bar a little high. I always look for four stars and at least a thousand people to be using it. And then it, if, it, if it floats your boat, install it. If you don't like it after a while, you can delete it. So that's all here in the handout. Um, I do have a couple of suggestions. I'll be adding to this. Um, as a matter of fact, I'm gonna add some text to it now. Grackle. So if you want to, um, Orange Slice Teacher and Student Rubric, really cool tool. And there's a video online that, um, I'm making a note to myself, a video that I will include off to the side of this image. So I'll have a little video icon here on how to use Orange Slice Rubric. I found one, it was really cool. The guy knew what he was talking about. So <laughs> Translate Plus, you can have, um, text within a document translate automatically within the document off to the side into any language that Google supports. Okay. And then you can copy that and paste it into the language without having to translate the entire document, which is what you have to do right now without the add-on. Um, I will update this handout and you will get a June, actually a June, yeah, June 9th um, version. By the end of today, you'll have a June 9th PDF that you can download and you can do whatever you want with it, but it will be stuck in time. So if I work on this tomorrow, you're stuck with June 9th. So um, here's the Lorem Ipsum doc. If you want that, 
it's really just nonsense text uh, with a table of contents. It's, I use it as filler so that when I'm creating a website or I want to know how much space something is going to take without having to type something, it, there's a bunch of lorem ipsums there. So you can use that if you want. Um, permissions. This handout and graphic created by SCOE Tech, Google and IT, SCOE Tech at gmail.com. Um, it was created for OTAN, for adult education, and you have my blessings. Use it. This handout, again, it should explain things for you if you're not familiar with Google Docs. And uh, it'll even give you some information if you are familiar with Google Docs. You're going to learn something new if you go through the entire handout. I guarantee you.